The quality of an EIA depends largely on the proper identification of the environmental and social aspects that may be subject to direct and indirect impacts from the proposed activity or project. A clearly defined project scope is the basis of an adequate EIA. Therefore, identifying the relevant issues and concerns from the beginning is an essential part of the EIA process. If the scope is too narrow, the EIA might overlook significant impacts that are not necessarily obvious but real and possibly negative, or leave out stakeholders who would be affected by an activity or project. If the scope is too broad or unclear, the EIA can become overstretched and overburdened with irrelevant issues, require unnecessary efforts, and distract from the analysis of key issues. With new development projects, there is a risk of generating site-specific impacts, as well as impacts on the surrounding areas. The risk and impacts do not always decrease with an increase in distance from the project site. Some impacts are obvious, while others are not. The scoping phase should take place in the beginning of the EIA process and ideally include the participation of the reviewer. The participation of reviewers in this phase shapes the EIA process, including the scope, purpose, alternatives, area of study, resources, and the type of assessment. Unfortunately, scoping is often done before the reviewers are involved. In many cases, EIA reviewers are left to determine after the fact whether the scoping was done correctly, whether the correct number of topics and scenarios were contemplated, and whether all the information and perspectives were considered. Was there an opportunity to solicit views and comments from all the key stakeholders? Who was involved or consulted in the process of preparing the EIA and in what way? The benefits of communicating with and involving all stakeholders is important, especially during the EIA review. Technical experts may overlook key information or areas of study that local citizens and communities can more easily identify due to their proximity to the potentially affected areas and greater stake in the outcome. Fortunately, when trying to assess or define the scope of an EIA, reviewers do not have to guess. Some helpful criteria for evaluating the adequacy of the scoping include the following. Are potentially significant issues and interactions for natural and human environments indicated? Are insignificant issues identified and their exclusion from further assessment justified? Are the viewpoints of all stakeholders considered? Are the spatial and temporal scopes of the EIA defined in sufficient detail? Is an adequate geographic area considered? Are any significant issues omitted? Are key issues and situations clarified? After confirming that the scoping has been done correctly, the reviewer ensures that there is a solid foundation for a well-focused and complete EIA. The EIA will serve as the basis for decision-making and defining the appropriate requirements for the project proponents. Additionally, the scoping stage provides valuable input for analyzing the alternatives for project siting and design. Ultimately, this can help avoid unnecessary and significant impacts and lead to more sustainable projects.